Hey everybody, this is Franco, and this video is going to be talking about the plans for converting your Precision Matthews PM25 MV milling machine over to CNC. So what I'm going to do is tell you everything I can, uh, give you all the information I can, uh, for those of you that want to build your own CNC conversion kit for one of these machines. So let's get into it. So the design was done in Fusion 360, and I think it's pretty good. I've, I'm done making changes to it. It works pretty well for me. I'm really happy with it, and I'm at a point now where I don't mind sharing it with everybody that uh, would like to see what I was doing. So what you're going to see in the description of this video, um, there's going to be some information there that you want to look at. What you're going to see is a hyperlink to a uh, 3D view of the whole assembly that you can access through a internet browser like Google Chrome or Internet Explorer. And this is all furnished by Autodesk's um, Fusion 360 document sharing services. It works really well. And uh, yeah, so you can go, you can rotate the model around, you can you know, look underneath, all around it, see how everything's put together. And you can also explode the assembly. So if you come here, you can slide this little slide bar, and the assembly will explode. So you can uh, make things sort of separate, and then you can zoom in and see all the individual components. So this is a really powerful tool, in my opinion. And as you play around, you'll see that there's also, uh, you know, more, more icons on the bottom that will uh, help you uh, analyze this model. So I'm just going to try to go back here to the, the normal view. All right, there's also this little icon over here in the left-hand corner, if you click on that, you'll see you can um, get an exploded view of the uh, different, comp or the, uh, an exploded view of the assembly, and you can kind of highlight certain, certain pieces of it. So that can be really handy too for, you know, checking out all of these, uh, you know, different components and how they work. And it will let you download uh, this assembly. I haven't tried that, but the options are here, and maybe that will work for you. So that's the first thing that you'll see. The second link you're going to see is to a Dropbox folder where I've located uh, mostly all the IGES files, and I've also put in a few drawings in PDF format, and these are drawings for the ball screws, and we'll talk about that in a second. So all the IGES files are here, and uh, I'm sorry I don't have drawings for every component, but, but I do have drawings for the ball screws, which is good because that's what you're going to use. You're going to use these drawings for the ball screws to actually order them. I will put a email address for the, the gentleman that I've purchased these ball screws from, and he's a big eBay seller. I think it's Linear Motion 2008. I think this is eBay uh, username. But if you send him these PDF files, these uh, have enough information on them that he can supply these ball screws and ball nuts, and uh, he'll machine the ends per these drawings. And he usually does pretty good. His name is Chai. Uh, he's Chinese. And I've never actually spoken to him, but I have purchased many, many, many ball screws and ball nuts from him, and he seems to be a really uh, decent individual. Um, occasionally, I'll get something from him that maybe is bent or isn't quite right, and he's always made good on it. So I don't have a problem recommending him to anybody, and you'll never beat the price of these ball screws. You can source these from anyone, anywhere. Um, but, uh, you know, Chai is very competitive in price, and his ball screws are pretty good, and 
Uh, I've had almost all good experiences with him. He's never uh, let me down. He's never let me uh, in the lurch, so to speak. So these will be in the Dropbox location. The next thing I want to talk about, a couple of uh, the design elements here of the kit. The kit was, or the design is uh, such that you you don't have to modify the the machine to make this work. So a lot of the a lot of the designs out there, a lot of the kits, you actually have to uh, cut grooves in the saddle and uh, you know get your grinder out and stuff like that to make this work. This kit or this design. You don't have to do that. Everything fits. So the PM25MV is a nice milling machine because there's a lot of clearance in the saddle, or at least more clearance than like a GO704. And that makes it possible to get ball screws and ball nuts under there. Uh, one of the things that I did, I uh, did not use 16 millimeter ball screws for X and Y. I used 12 millimeter ball screws, which are smaller, obviously, than 16 millimeter. But I've had no problem with them. They've worked great. I've had zero issues. So I'm happy with those 12 millimeter uh, ball screws that I used. In the, the solid model, you'll see that there's only a, a single nut in the design. But I actually stacked up two nuts on top of each other. So I had this ball nut going in one direction, and then I had another ball nut going in the other direction. And I use steel shims. I just stacked up shims in between the ball nuts to adjust the preload. And that was how I was able to uh, minimize the backlash. I had the backlash dialed out. I'm really happy with it. I don't have much backlash in my milling machine at all. So you can do the same thing. You could, you could use one ball nut. You could stack up two ball nuts. You could use shims to uh, preload the ball nuts. Or you may even be able to just use... Um, you know, screws to, to preload the ball nuts. So you may be able to put uh, something you know, I wanted to experiment with. I just haven't got around to it. I was going to put four four socket cap screws through this first ball nut and mount it to the block. And then I was going to use these these two ball screws, or uh, these two uh, holes to run a socket cap screw through the secondary ball nut to, to preload it. But at either rate, I'll leave that up to you to figure out what you think is, is the best way to uh, preload your, your ball nuts. I used shims, and it you know takes a little while to get the, the spacing just right, but it, it worked really well for me. Let's see, what else is there to say? Um, let's look here inside the column. The design uses a 16 millimeter ball screw for the z-axis and a double a double ball nut for that and that's just because not so much for backlash it's really because you know the the, the head is heavy and this uh, z-axis is doing a lot of work it's seen a lot more force so I wanted to make that more heavy duty this part right here this this bracket that holds the z-axis ball nut the trick there is being able to shoehorn that down inside the column because there's not a lot of room in the column. So that's why it is shaped the way that it is. It's kind of uh, an asymmetrical shape. It's basically just to make it uh, as small as possible so you can fit it into the column. You may come up with a better design than I did. This was just something that I I actually um, you know, just threw together here. I actually, you know, truth be told, when I made this block the first time, I made it much bigger, and I had a lot of trouble getting it down inside the column. I actually I had to chop and whittle away with my bandsaw to make the uh, original, let's say, prototype bracket fit. So based on that experience, I, I slimmed down the design, and, and this is what you see here. Uh, I don't think you'll have any trouble fitting this in the column. And like I said, you can you can tweak that if you want. Uh, to make it easier to machine or whatever you need to do. But the, you know, the bolt hole pattern and the spacings and everything are there for you to work with. Other things that I think are worth mentioning. 
I used these FK style uh, supports to carry the ball screws. So rather than rather than um, just mount the bearings right in these aluminum blocks, I designed it so you can purchase these FK supports that already have uh, the bearings preloaded inside of them, and then you just mount these FK blocks to these aluminum brackets. That's worked out really well for me. These are, if you buy good quality FK supports, you know, they're very accurate. They're good bearings. They're preloaded. Uh, you know, they're parallel to one another. Everything's just right. So all the precision is, uh, is inside this FK block. And that, that makes the uh, mounting bracket just a little bit less critical, a little bit easier to make. So you'll see those on the X axis. You'll see those on the, uh, the Y axis. There's, there's one right here. And of course, there's a, uh, so, so the X and Y use FK10. And you'll see up here on Z axis, it's an FK12. All of these things can be found on eBay. Just, you know, don't buy the cheapest ones you can find. Uh, try to buy better quality ones. And, you know, you get what you pay for when it comes to this stuff. Okay, let's see, what else is there worth mentioning? Uh, I think the rest of the design will pretty much speak for itself when you look at the solid models. The, uh, oh, yeah, the limit switch brackets are here. So, you know, I, I included those in the design. Um, those are made out of aluminum extrusion. It's pretty simple to put those together. But I highly recommend... Uh, putting limit or let's say limit slash homing switches on your machine. I would definitely do that. Last thing that I'll, I'll share with you, I uh, highly recommend that you give consideration to the Centroid Acorn CNC control system. I used to use Mach 3 for everything, but uh, I've converted over to Acorn. I really like it. I think it's a great product. I think the people at Centroid are, are good people, and I think they're putting a great product out there to help the DIY CNC community. So I highly recommend that you go with their products, or at least give them, uh, give them consideration when you're researching. And if you do go with their stuff, I think you'll be really happy. If you want to go with something else, that's fine. Do whatever you want. But um, as far as I go, I like the Centroid stuff. That's all I'm, I'm using these days, nothing else. All right, thanks for uh, checking this out, and I hope these uh, files help you with your CNC projects. I know I'm, I'm really happy with my milling machine. I'm really happy with this design. Matter of fact, I'll probably be making some parts today. The last thing that I'll leave you with is the disclaimer. Please read this. I... Um, I'm not going to present myself as an expert in anything. I can't take responsibility or accept any liability for uh, any injuries or damages or any anything negative that happens while you're working on your CNC projects. Uh, so, you know, thank you for understanding that. And, you know, please be safe as you're working on your projects. You want to make sure that this stuff is always fun and... Uh, trip to the emergency room is, is not fun for anybody. So please be careful and just remember you are responsible for your own safety. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and be safe.